I think we really need to ask ourselves, what do we mean when we talk about God helping people? And this might not be you know, sort of lurking behind the question. It, 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 it jumps out to me, uh, you know, hearing the question. But this whole concept of God helping people, I think, needs a little bit of thought. You know, we could just as well ask why God bothers to use human intervention or people in any way. What I mean by that is, if you really think about it, the the fabric of human existence has, you know, and, and life with God, you know, humans being humans, being alive, being created, and, and having God, you know, part of the picture. That whole picture has human interaction built into it. That's the way human life was designed. You know, God didn't create humans to be bystanders. We sort of presume that God helping, okay, means like direct divine intervention and that it bypasses human effort or interaction. Uh, and so w- when people aren't helped, then God didn't show up, so to speak. I, I just don't think that's that's the right way to think about God helping when we talk about God helping people, we're not talking about, oh, God didn't show up. Because if when we talk about God helping people, what we really mean is, I didn't see direct divine intervention. Okay, well then, you know, why do we even care about human interaction at all? If 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 God helps people through direct divine intervention, he doesn't need people. So, you know, the, the, the whole process is kind of kind of ridiculous, you know, for us to involve ourselves in people's lives. We don't need to do that because if God really wants to help them, God will directly and divinely intervene. He doesn't need people. He just directly does this. God helps. Well, again, I, I, I'm not saying that, that, that the questioner thinks that, but this is just coming out of me because I, I, I really do think this is something we all talk about that isn't, isn't very well examined. The whole way that God helps is using people, is using his imagers or his spirit. I talked about this in Unseen Realm. God is actively all the time engaged in helping. That doesn't mean he jumps into every life circumstance and decides to intervene directly or not. God is always helping how? He, he can use his spirit, you know, that indwells believers, you know, to prompt them to do this or that or not do this or that. He fundamentally, and, I, and frequently, I think this is the norm, uses other people, especially other believers, in the lives of other people. Okay, that, that's God's means of, of helping. It's not direct divine intervention, but that's how God gets things done. He can use non-human imagers, you know, with the guardian angel story. I mean, that, that stuff does happen. But the norm, when people get helped— in a spiritual sense, or even in a, in, a, in, a, in a very material sense, it's because of other people. And God has, this is the way God has built humanity. This is the way God has, has fashioned, has designed the way human life should be. Interaction. Again, God influencing people to help other people. So when I think of God helping I don't think of direct divine intervention, even though we talk about it that way. When I think of people not getting helped, okay, I don't think, oh, I guess God didn't show up. He, he, took, he took the day off, or he had something better to do. Again, that, that, that's a very theologically you know, skewered and I think flawed way to look at, at God helping. What I think of is, well, I hope and I believe that God will use other people to bring into this person's life or have input into this person's life and get them help. And I sure hope that the people that God is actively influencing will obey. Okay. will will you know, take a risk, will obey and, and, and actually, you know, do something to help this person. You know, again, it's just a different way of looking at things I've said before. And, and again, in my novels, I try to make this a theme providence and sovereignty are just huge in the way the world works and the way it's designed to work. The whole concept of us being God's imagers, God's replacements, God's proxies, okay, on this planet, by definition, means that 
God's ministry to people has humans built into it. You know, yeah, God could be everywhere at all times, directly, divinely intervening in every problem. Okay, but God has not built the system that way. He uses imagers, human or non-human, and his spirit. So, again, I think we just need to be a little more careful. I don't want to you know, go too far on, on, on this sort of thing, but we need to start looking at, at our life having dozens, hundreds, thousands of ripples. Everything we do or don't do when, when God prompts us to do it, our obediences and our disobediences ripple out into the fabric of life, as it were. And being obedient to God in one place will be of assistance to some person in that immediate moment. And then that can ripple out through that person to another person and to another person and to another person ad infinitum. This is how God has designed things. Not direct divine intervention on his part, but using his imagers, his proxies, to bless and heal and, and help in, in whatever way other people. So again, this might be a bit of a hobby horse with me. I, I just think it's a real misconception to look at someone who wasn't helped by some method and assume that God failed or God didn't bother. That's just flawed theology. It really is. But it's very easy to think that way. Again, we need to step up and put yourself in the gap. Okay, when you see, you know, somebody not getting help, maybe you, you know, were providentially put in that place to see that thing didn't work so that you could jump in and do something. Okay, maybe that's the whole providential reason the thought even popped into your head so that you could play a role. I don't know. I'm not God. Okay, I'm not in charge of the providences of everyone's life. But if we thought more providentially, if we thought about our lives, again, rippling out through other lives on a, on a moment by moment, day by day, week by week basis, it might change the way we think about this. Again, I, I, I should stop because I could go on a long time about you know, how we think about God's activity in the world. I just think that, that, again, the way it gets thought of too often divorces us from the equation. Puts, gets us off the hook and makes God a, a convenient target when, when God is not the, the target. This is, this is the way God has made things, uh, made us to live. And so we might want to think about actually living that way.